Okay, that's Chief okay. Minister Basavraj Bomai. He is live at this time watching the results. Obviously not looking happy and he has no reason to. He was quite upset uh, with our network at different times during the campaign. But we did have the trend right. Our reporters, our editors, our anchors on the ground were picking up the right trend which was that the Congress was leading, the BJP wasn't. And uh, you know Rajdeep, a lot of the problems his government has had to deal with are problems he inherited. These aren't oh, problems absolutely. of his making. He's been in power only for 21 months. And, and he's a fascinating character. You know, S.R. Bomai was a royist. Came from the you know, left socialist stream. And Karnataka has always had a strong tradition of left socialist politics. He came through the Janta Dal, joined the, uh, the BJP. Look at two, the two main faces so, of this yeah. election on either side are both from the Janta Dal. One Siddharamaya came from the Janta Parivar. And then you have uh, Mr. Bomai from the Janta Parivar. You see, this state is what my friend Dr. Shastri, in a very fine column of his, said floating MLAs. Se jao, waha jao. It's happening in Maharashtra. You know, Karnataka and Maharashtra share a lot in common. We have Poha and Idli together in Belgavi at breakfast. And now it's our politics. It has shifted so much. Defectors are all over the place. No, no. But I want to just give you a number. You said Lingayas. And I have a sense. Look at this. 19 to 12 among SC seats. 37 SC seats. Congress leading in 19 to 12. Last time the BJP did very well, especially among the left Dalits. And this is one of the stories of this election. The Dalit vote is switching. And take a look at this. And I'm sure here too you'll find a story. Look at this. 12 yes. 2. And look at what happened. Mr. Bomai gave internal reservations, raised 15% to 17% for Dalits, gave special reservation for ST. Why do you do it last moment? Ye public hai na, ye sab janti hai. You do it at the last moment. You give Vokaliga's reservation, Linga's reservation, take away from Muslims. It doesn't work. You want to do all this? Do it one year before. When you do it on the eve of the election round, it doesn't work. This is the story. Never before in the history of Karnataka has a party that has lost SCST won the election. You have to win the SCST. We talk about Lingats, Vokaligas, they are dominant, they have the leaders, but the real story is here. San this is the story Sanju now. Varma is also with us. Sanju and she Jee, should answer that. 72 seats uh, for the BJP at this moment. Even on the Lingayats dominated 69 seats, the Congress is leading on 49. Now that's very perplexing. You're holding on to your Lingayats vote share. Trailing on Lingayat seats, they seem to have been able to build a strong umbrella non-Lingayat coalition against you. And I can add to that, you're losing Dalit and ST seats. Okay, Just let me, Mr. Modi let me wins, and you're losing among women. Your woman vote is gone. Can I please? Rasip, okay. you know, you've asked a question, now please have the uh, yes, assumption to listen respond. to what I have to say. Thank you, thank you. And please don't heckle me. You know, no, I won't. Uh, first, and foremost, first and foremost, let me start from where Rasip left. Ji haan, ye public hai, ye sab janti hai. I don't wish to sound arrogant or overconfident, but let's be very clear, Rajdeep, that the decision to hike uh, the scheduled caste quota from 15 to 17 percent and that of scheduled tribes from uh, 3 to 7 percent, this was done by way of an ordinance that was passed way back in October 2022. So while you might say that this was done, uh, you know, keeping an eye on elections and on the eve of elections, I have this to ask you. Why is it that despite ruling Karnataka for the longest time, the Congress was not able to do so? The Congress has been promising this for the last uh, 20 or 30 odd years. So please don't, you know, sit here and wax eloquent about the BJP playing electoral politics because at least we decided to do what needed to be done for Dalits and Adivasis. That's my point number one. My point number two is BJP has held on to its vote share of 36.3% as we speak. Point number three, in 106 to 108 constituencies, the BJP is still a very, very strong contender. Point number four, and the most important point, in any seat in Karnataka, there are at least 16 to 18 to 20 to 22 rounds. And as I speak with you, there are six to eight or at best 10 rounds that have been completed, which means that in many seats, only 25 to 30 or 40 percent at best is the amount of rounds that have taken place and there's still a lot of room in terms of which way this I election is headed. Ma'am, Sanju Varma ji, all very fine points. You answer a simple question. 1200 rupees gas cylinder prices. Everywhere I went to rural Karnataka, they said this is too much. During Siddharamaya's time May it was 450. No, no, one minute ma'am now. You must listen. That no, no, you believe you've was a critical this point factor. On occasions. You've made this point on umpteen occasions. I know what you're going to say. Let me preempt you for a change. You know, I even heard the Congress panelists. And I have this to say. 
and I am speaking with data just like you speak with data. The fact of the matter is that excise duty on petrol and diesel was reduced by 5 rupees and 10 rupees in November 2021. Again, excise on petrol and diesel was reduced by 6 rupees and 8 rupees respectively in May 2022. My question is, why is it that Gandharagar in Rajasthan has the highest petrol and diesel prices? The Gehlot government did not reduce that meaningfully at all, nor did the Chhattisgarh government. In fact, the highest petrol and diesel prices are in six to seven non-BJP rule states. So please don't meddle with what is happening narrative. here. Okay, okay. You know the fact is though that you know every no, no, party no, no. has been. I want to correct by that. the end, even the BJP in its manifesto said we'll give gas cylinder on three festivals. Sadly, those three festivals didn't include Eid. But that's another battle for another day. The truth of the matter is that See, for Rajiv, one year I last year, all you did was hijab, azan, halal. Speak? You did not focus on welfareism. Shama Mohammed, you want to take that point that it's all this election, local anti-incumbency will really be hurting BJP. Let's not in welfare Rajasthan, it could hurt you. So, you Giving know, before you celebrate... Giving 31 lakh people the benefit of Ayushman Bharat is not welfareism. Are, ma'am, just a minute, you're on the road. Giving 31 lakh Ujwara gas and industry the women of Karnataka is not welfareism. Rajiv, are you hallucinating? Okay, I'm hallucinating. But, uh, I'm asking you, Shama Mohammed. Rajiv, this lady has to stop speaking. You know, Shama Mohammed, you are a hard oh bigger. Okay, Rajiv, Shama you're Mohammed, talking about excise duty. I'm not here okay, to take Okay, can we reduce Sanju Varma's voice? She talks uh, about... Uh, the she fact talks is, about, Shama Mohammed, do you concede that yeah, this is Karnataka about, about, election? The next one could be Rajasthan. You could lose there. There also, the petrol prices are rising. Sanju Varma, you're right. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, please don't meddle with what is happening here. Okay, Rajiv, no, I'm. No, Rajdeep, two points in this, what I want to tell. She talked about excise duty. She should understand when we were leaving in 2014, it was 9 rupees, the excise duty. Now, what has happened is from there, when they just took over, they went to 34 and 35, respectively, diesel and pe petrol and diesel. So just that tell is me the why you then did you not reduce. Five, then you reduce four, doesn't matter. And, and let me finish. And then, one more thing I want to ask Sanju Varma. I saw Prime Minister Narendra Modi campaigning ferociously, that's the word I'm going to use. Is Prime Minister Narendra Modi going to take responsibility for today's defeat or is he a leader only capable of taking responsibility when victory is there? A true leader should take responsibility for victory as well as defeat. I want to know who is going to be responsible. Are they going to do local leaders? Because Gujarat, you can do whatever you want in Gujarat. You know, change your MLAs, change your CMs. That doesn't work in Karnataka or in the southern states. That is one thing very clear today. And I want to know if the Prime Minister of India is going to take responsibility because we fought on the right issues, we fought on people's issues. And there the fight was about Muslims, okay. Hindus, Bajrang Dal, PFI. This is what the Prime Minister was you talking about. You didn't answer my so question. That's the problem with you all. You, you didn't answer my question. Why, we, why don't you reduce Jodo, petrol? Jodo, and, Jodo why Jodo don't you reduce VAT prices? Get the message, ma'am. The message is public hai garib, garibo ki suno wo tumhari suno ga. You don't bring down petrol diesel prices in Rajasthan, you will pay a price. I will give you the answer. The Rajasthan, in Rajasthan, those who have had the Ujwala scheme, the gas has been given at 500 rupees. So we are using it somewhere else. Every state has a way to use their revenue. Okay, the biggest question at this time is... We are giving the gas at 500 rupees. So we are doing things there. That is the problem. 